This video will cover the topic, solving an equation of the form x squared equals a using the square root property. Let's begin on some background on the square root property. Say we are given the equation x squared is equal to a. The square root property tells us that when a is negative, the equation will have no real solutions because no real number multiplied by itself will result in a negative number. When a is zero, the equation will have one solution, which is x is equal to zero. When a is positive, the equation will have two solutions. One of them will be x is equal to positive square root of a, and the other one will be x is equal to negative square root of a. I understand the first two rules, but I'm sort of confused about the third rule when a is positive. Let's look at an example. x squared is equal to 64. To isolate a single x by itself, we can take the square root of both sides. Now we are left with x is equal to the square root of 64. The square root property tells us that when 64 is positive, we must have a positive and negative solution. The square root of 64 is 8, so we get that x is equal to 8. I don't really understand why we have both a positive and a negative solution. Why don't we just have one positive solution? Why don't we take a look at our solution and go back to our original problem? x squared is equal to 64 is the same as x times x is equal to 64. So we wanted to find what number when multiplied by itself will equal 64. If we substitute our positive solution 8, we see that 8 times 8 is equal to 64, which is true. When we plug in our negative solution, negative 8, we see that negative 8 times negative 8 is equal to 64. This is also true because a negative number times another negative number results in a positive number. This is the reason why we have two solutions in problems like the one we just completed. Okay, I think I understand this now. So if we are given an equation in the form x squared equals a, there are three possibilities. If a is negative, there is no real solution. If a is zero, then there is one solution, which is x equals zero. If a is positive, there will be two solutions, one where x is positive and one where x is negative. It sounds like you really understand the square root property. 